Good evening, my dear friends, fellow photographers, travelers. Anna Vicks and Pass, and here is come to the fifth episode of my travelogues to Russia, and also will be the last episode. At the end of these episodes, we'll be moving on to a new nation, a nation that is far away from Malaysia, we have a different of 12 hour of time zones. A nation that have a lot world number ones. The highest lakes, the highest capital cities, the largest salt flats, and many more mysterious places that you can explore in this mysterious nation. I will share with you at the end of this episode. I hope you enjoy this evening, the last episode to St. Petersburg of Russia. Now, uh, as I said earlier, St. Petersburg is just a big uh, city with a lot of uh, history. It's the imperial capital of the Tsar dynasty for uh, close to 200 years. And therefore, uh, while going through this uh, St. Petersburg, we realize actually there are a lot of palaces, uh, beautiful palaces and parks and monuments and also cathedrals that need to share for the friends who have not been to Russia. And uh, I will go through uh, a very important uh, palace, beside the palace that we deal with, the State Hermitage uh, Palace that was a uh, State Hermitage Museum that was actually done last week. In today, we are going to deal with Peterhof Grand Palace. It's also an imperial palace, but this palace was uh, housed the Peter the Great, the Tars emperors who actually founded St. Petersburg. And uh, you can see from the pictures that this is actually a very beautiful palace too compared to the Catherine's Palace. Now, Peterhof Grand Palace was a luxurious imperial residence of the Emperor Peter the Great which is also the founder of the St. Peterburg that I mentioned just now. And as far as concerned, this palace complex houses a total of 30 rooms, each distinctively decorated. You will see later on in my pictures how uh, luxuriously uh, decorated of all these rooms. The palace, of course, now have turned into an architectural museum which is worthy and iconic tourist attractions. And it's famous especially for its grand casket Samson's fountains. During our visit, because it's the winter, so we didn't visit the gardens. And the fountains actually they have stopped operating because all the water was frozen. Right? We only can see all the frozen ice on the fountains. And the museum also displays many of the ruler artifacts and which we are going to see them also later on in my pictures. Now, for the architectural exhibits, they include maritime painting, chandeliers, wall coverings, decorations, and also the timber floorings. The building architectures incline towards Petrin's Barrot's the style of early 18th century type architectures because the influence by the Europe is very, very strong. Now, next to the palace house, one of the most beautiful parks in Russia, which is divided into the upper and lower gardens, right? And the Grand Cascading Garden, uh, the fountain, the Samson Fountains, is located on the upper gardens, while the lower garden are mainly the greens. And I was even told that, that uh, by someone saying that this garden house, the most fountain probably in the world. So 
So let's look at the images that you see now. This is actually when we are walk uh, away from the palace and we are almost reaching the lower gardens and we are look back at this grand palace and you can see of course uh, snow covering and you can see this cascading Samson uh, fountains was so beautiful uh, and you can see all the sculptures are being painted in goldish, brilliant goldish color. And this is another image uh, at a closer look on it. And uh, as I say, our visit is the winter, so everywhere is white. But uh, the whitest snow give us a different type of feel and in, of course it will come during summer. I believe that I was told it's also, you were also very surprised. This garden is very beautiful, very well uh, landscapes. And as usual, as it's an emperor's residence, you can see that the decoration, the architecture aspect of it are very elaborated and intricate. Uh, done and you can see that all the domes of the roof everything are still very outstanding and this is when we are walking toward the palace and uh, working for the uh, looking for the entrance to, to to enter to this museum and uh, of course we are walking on the snow and uh, we extreme care and this is a closer looks of the uh, buildings, the palace buildings as we go close. And uh, this is another closer uh, image of the cascading uh, fountains. You can see the figures, the scripture, one after the other are well lined up on both sides of the fountain. The only regret that you can see any water flowing or oh, the founder is not operating. Of course, at this time of the years, how could they expect the founder to be operating? And uh, at the top, right at the center of this uh, cascading uh, fountains, we look down. You can see that there is the this. There's a look like a waterway. Actually, it's a channels. They lead you to the river. In other words, this fountain. I mean, these gardens is actually beside the river Newa and uh, therefore uh, if any important guests of the emperor were to arrive they actually can just park near the riverside and then use a smaller boat to come into the palace through these channels so it's very uniquely uh, done in such a way that it makes it so convenient for the visitor of the emperor to, to come to the palace and visit him. And this is some, of course, the uh, images, uh, closer look of the, uh, the dome and the roof of the palace. And of course, the gold is golden color is the main uh, color that actually appear in a lot of elements or ornaments on the buildings. And as you walk into the palace, of course, as you show that uh, all palaces uh, that during our visit, we have to have our shoe uh, cover up to ensure the soil, the interior of the palace, and also to afraid that, that the, the sand particles that are uh, attached to our shoe may actually uh, cause abrasion and cause damages to the surface of the flooring, the timber flooring. Most of it are timber flooring. And you look at this image, you can see it is another very exclusively, intensively, intricately designed type of interior design. And you can see it's not far different, I mean, it's in terms of the grandness, uh, not far from the State Hermitage uh, Museum. And also you look at it itself, it also has painting everywhere and in this case in this room itself you see that it is above the ceiling there's a very large painting and this is another view of the interior of this Peterhof Grand Palace 
And of course, the flooring is all timber flooring. I think that uh, we, are, we can understand that because in, in country like Russia, we have uh, more than half a year in the winter. I think no other flooring more suitable than the timber flooring. The timber is the best insulation materials and therefore uh, it's more comfortable to live in, in the winter zone or in area that is actually have winter. This is another room, another room whereby you can see the color scheme and start to change. But again, it don't run far from, uh, from using gold colors as the main color scheme in this uh, Peterhof Palace. And you, you can look at the floor. If you look at this image, you look at the floor. You can see that also it's very, very unique and the design is very, uh, I should say, they really spend a lot of thinking uh, when they design these buildings. It make every attempt that is unique in every corner. So you look at it itself, you find that actually uh, it can cost many, many craftsmen, many hundreds of hours to do that. And this, sorry, uh, I go back a bit, uh, it's jump a bit far, all right? Now, the, there are three pictures here, all right? And it three is taking on the same room. And as far as concerned, the left mode and the right mode is just as the two end of the ceiling. And to show you the painting above the ceiling. Well, or the middle image is with the intention to show you that the floorings, and of course this is also a long cylinder hall as what we actually encountered in the earlier episode in Catherine Palace. And uh, here I'm trying to, not only on the right, I'm trying to show you a picture that actually taken on the ceiling, from, this is a picture from the ceiling. And exactly the portion of it itself to show exactly how well the, the painting was done, you know, and it's so impressive. And our rooms. Generally, I, I feel I realized actually um, um, in this uh, Peter Hawk uh, Grand Palace. Uh, the quite a number of rooms they actually like uh, favorite the, the design color scheme using goldish color and white. So you can see that the only thing that the that the only the ornaments the decoration is different, but actually they're still using these two main colors to blend out quite a number of these grand rooms in his palace. And this is another. Uh, 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 a bit different from the other previous few rooms and now you can see the other color coming in and uh, important thing is that it's here not only just only the floorings the ceiling works the cornices and the decoration the ornament on the wall like in this picture in this room you realize actually they also start bringing in curtains the blind and again uh, later on, you can see that it's also be formed part of the impressive tech interior design and decorations. Like in this case, they're using the red colors blind uh, on the windows, and at the same time, look at the color, the blue. I think it's look like blue, a green colors line that on the ceiling as well on the wall. It's well uh, so well blended out, uh, and as far as flooring is concerned, you have your an asset of design, right? And uh, of course, as usual, you still found a lot of pictures, paintings on the wall. But of course, the amount of painting you found in this palace is much more less than the in this uh, Catherine the Great uh, Palace. So this is some of the view of uh, on the on the side of the wall. And of course, you just look at the chandeliers, right? And also equally uh, impressive. And uh, this is just to uh, 
getting close to the columns, to the painting on the columns, and also to the corner of the building. And you just look at the, the cornices, the, de the design, the, the, the inlay, the, right, all, on, on the ceiling, and also on the wall. A much closer view. And this is just uh, to give you a sight at the, at the end, both end of the wall. And you can see there are two doors. Uh, this is actually a typical uh, area whereby you, when you enter, that room to room itself actually is going for a very uh, slow and slinty down building. You know, just like you can see even from the picture, at the first few pictures when you look from the outside facade, it's spread over a very long length, right? So therefore, we are basically walking from one end of the room to the next room, and then it's a, it's a long rectangular room. And so you're moving in, and therefore we are moving in from one door, and we may come back to the same room uh, because you're going from one end, of that means a U-turn back. So, so you may uh, come back to this room uh, on the return journey. And uh, this is uh, the painting. And this is a maritime painting, as I mentioned just now. It's a bit unique from the collection from Catherine. Catherine, he bought it from Berlin, paint, uh, from the Berlin artist. But as far as concerned, this actually is not. It's a painting that engaged, uh, the artist engaged by the Peter the Great. And the maritime uh, uh, type of painting is, is uh, the characteristic or the, the, the collections that they found in this palace. And this is just to show you the uh, timber inlay on the floor. All right. And uh, it's, uh, it's not easy. In French, speaking, I'm in the construction line. I know very well that uh, to do this stuff, timber inlay, it really, really has to be very, very tip top skills in doing that. You know? And it's, it's extremely uh, intricate and difficult to do and time consuming. And this and our pictures focus on just the timber floorings on the different sections of the floor of this palace. Well, now moving on to another rooms, and you can see that now the curtain color has changed, and they're using the gold, goldish color. And as usual, you can't run away. Uh, with painting, and you can see the artifacts, artifacts of uh, use by the Peter the Great are uh, some displacing at the, at the, around the building, along the uh, between the rooms, and you can see more of this. But of course, you are not allowed to touch, of course. And again, if you sure that you have uh, personnel, uh, museum personnel gathered in each room, and interestingly, uh, when we are there. We, you, you have to follow very closely to our tour guide. And, uh, and you can only go forward with the floor. You can only move together with the tour guide and you cannot go back, do a reverse gear. Let's say you enter the, this room number one, then you go to room number two, then you thought, of, I, want, I want to take some more pictures, I want to go back to room number one. Unfortunately, you are not allowed to do so. You are stuck in room number two. And you go to room of three, you are stuck in three. You cannot go back to number two. And if you go too fast, they will ask you where is your tour, uh, tour guide. They will ask you to close, get, walk close to the tour guide. So this is somehow they control uh, to uh, ensure that there is uh, no reverse flow. Because uh, although we are there during uh, winter, you know, uh, and there's not many visitors. But uh, imagine if during the summer itself, if you allow the visitor to crowd, do a reverse flow itself, it could be chaotic, you know, in, in, the, in the museum. So I okay, can understand they practice one way straight, that of uh, control. So uh, mind you that, that, that you are there, uh, please take note of this, uh, this ruling. And uh, you can see the, the marine time picture, painting now on the wall. The four painting, oh, I'm talking about wall, uh, the picture of the wall warships uh, on fires and things like that. 
and this is actually the painting on the ceiling. Right, and of, of course that the uh, you can enjoy it now because it's it already in the form picture on the screen. But you will really want to see it, you have to really turn your head right up 90 degrees from your body before you can really enjoy uh, looking at these pictures that painting on above the ceiling, above the I mean above your head. So we also come to uh, rooms that have been uh, for dining purposes. And usually it's the same thing happened uh, in uh, Catherine's the palace and also the Peter Hawk Palace itself. They have a few rooms to uh, cater for dining purposes and again is uh, for different function. If you are a royal family, you probably use a uh, different room, different set of cautery and everything will not be the same. I mean the displays, everything, the item that you use, the plate, the fork, everything could be a complete different set different design they make it uh, distinctly different and they have uh, make sure that you know they don't mix up you know so this is the, the practice they've been actually in in this royal family or in this ta uh, dynasty so uh, are you sure you know uh, you look at the wall this color scheme say it start to change but then you again you realize that now you have again have a ceramic or porcelain type of object on the wall like what I told you last week that we have a bluish ceramic or porcelain type of structures the mounted on the wall exactly this also is the heater same thing that you, you, you saw in the previous uh, episode and is also here because in the ancient time they didn't have the, the, the they didn't have a proper heating uh, system and this is one of the best heating system that is actually this style porcelain object itself then you can put in you can see there's one little hole on the right most picture there there's one little hole i'm sorry cover by my uh, pictures there's one little hole uh, at the bottom of this porcelain uh, object whereby that's where they put in the, the burning coal and then they, when you close it, it the burning coal will generate heat the heat will then transmit through the surface of the through the surface of the porcelain Uh, here, there is uh, a, a lot of uh, portrait uh, pictures, pictures of people, big and small. And I was told that these are all the uh, the classmates or schoolmates of the emperor's uh, daughter, you know. And uh, and it's so many of it, you know, and. Uh, I, I can't really take uh, every one of them, but uh, uh, it's completely occupied one side of the wall and also at the other side of the both long side of the wall they also have like what you see in the picture now right above it you know and uh, this uh, the view against uh, on the ceiling above in these rooms. No, and uh, you notice that the as I mentioned earlier, the uh, the curtains, the blind, and it's also form part of very unique uh, uh, decorating I decorative items that have been used in this uh, palace. You know that it's not the same. Every room, again, is not the same. Not only the the everything, but the curtain itself. They use the color, also not the same. Uh, this is just a, a close shot of the the portrait of the the those ladies, young ladies, right in these rooms. All are very young ladies and, and, and men. I was told this out of friends to the daughter of the emperor. This is a, again another painting above the ceiling. Uh, there's some distortion, I think, because uh, using white angle lens, I expect to have some form of uh, lens distortion to the image. And uh, we are moving from those uh, big functional hall, from so-called the dining hall, and they're now moving to uh, private rooms, rooms that are actually used by the, the royal families, used by the emperor, the Peter the Great. 
and here well, you can see more of the artifacts, the furnitures and that have been used by the emperors. So uh, in this part of the wall, uh, hall, I mean in uh, rooms, you realize that the, there's something you need to notice that there is actually the wallpaper now. They start introducing wallpaper to rooms, these rooms. Of course, a much smaller room compared with just now the hall we have, uh, we came across the last few number of hall. There are many smaller rooms like that actually strictly are uh, actually occupied by the royal families uh, and also the emperors. See, these are next rooms. You see the wall, the wallpapers have started to change in color, different color, and look at the floor as well. Are you sure that, uh, as I mentioned earlier, not a single room are, are the same in design. Every room are unique in itself, identical, non-identical in this aspect. Right, so this is just uh, some closer views of these rooms. These are in our rooms. These rooms are all much smaller, much smaller, all right? But they contain a lot of uh, furnitures and artifacts and uh, painting on the wall. They have a lot of painting on the wall. And this is something you can enjoy uh, looking at it itself. And this is a place where the royal family have their rest. It's my resting area. And uh, you can see that the sofa there, the, right, is uh, so uh, uniquely decorated. And, and the color is, again, uh, much more sooty uh, for, for resting. Uh, this is a closer look. It's again, pictures, closer look at it. And also the, the so another long sofa for the family people to sit and get together. And this is also the chandeliers that they are in that rooms. And other rooms. This is uh, believed to be his uh, study rooms or working rooms. Like you can see that there is uh, some writing tables. So, uh, you know, uh, in summary, I have to say that actually, uh, it's actually uh, to, more to work architecture display. As I said earlier, it's an architectural museum. Uh, the interesting part is all is on all the uh, architecture displays and, uh, and also the colors. The, all those things are the main uh, gist of it. Painting and artifact, it just happened to be uh, a blend with it and it was actually used by the emperors. And these are some of the expensive uh, artifacts, the clocks and all those displays. This is just some of it. Right. So, uh, so literally, we are moving from room to rooms, as uh, much smaller rooms after the, uh, the grand hall. So this, uh, I can't really exactly see this room is for what purposes, but I think that it seems to be a, a very uh, exclusive place. The design and the decoration is much more elaborated. Oh yes, it is the the bedrooms of the emperors. Some of the displays. And of course, uh, you also have some uh, painting. Uh, 
even the uh, carving wood carvings was on the wall right it's so uh, outstanding and then uh, the next thing is that we're going to move on to uh, one of very important uh, place of interest again uh, in uh, St. Peterburg's there is a St. Isaac Cathedral. I will consider this cathedral as the most beautiful Orthodox uh, church in Russia. So far, as I said earlier in my earlier, uh, I have actually bring you to two of them, and uh, this is the third one. But this is the grandest one and the biggest one. And later you can see uh, with your own eyes of how exclusively that uh, this orthodox uh, church is being decorated internally. St. Isaac Cathedral is a Russian Orthodox church which began as a small wooden church in the year 1710. And today this cathedral is a museum. The current building structure was built between 1818 Till 1858, it's about 40 years duration. St. Isaac Cathedral is not only the largest cathedral in Russia, but also one of the most impressive landmarks of the Russian imperial capital, St. Petersburg. Now, until today, the church service still hold there on major occasions. The cathedral's facades are decorated with sculptures and massive granite columns made of single piece of red granite. Very, very huge and very, very heavy. The main doors are made of bronze cover in relief. Cathedral's main golden dome is of 21.8 meter in diameter and was stood 101.5 meter above ground. There are records saying that, that this construction of these cathedrals used up to 882 pounds of gold and 18 tons of precious, semi precious stone and 1000 tons of bronze, which used on the door. There is an observation platform above the cathedrals but you need to climb 238 steps why because we, we we were there i am counting the step and the last step is exactly 238 what a good number <laughs> to the chinese <laughs> and we are there later i'll show you some pictures uh, above this uh, viewing platform we can have a very grand view of saint peterburg's So this is actually the, the view of these uh, cathedrals and you can see that the, the columns, the round granite columns that even from far is of that size. When you go near, you can see how huge these grand solid granite columns that have been erected in this cathedral. A closer view. So you may wonder at that time, you know, there's no major machinery. How are they going to put up this massive, heavy, solid, round marbles or granite columns? How are they managed to do so? And this is just when I go near from look up, you can see that it's very, very long, very tall. This uh, granite column is very, very long. And I can say easily it's about maybe two, three story uh, or maybe 10 meter you know, above ground. I didn't really have a chance to measure or can find any information about how, what's the length of the column. But I'm sure that from the look at it itself, it will be easily uh, 10 meter uh, at least. And this is why I'm saying that the grand uh, bronze uh, relief on the door, the metal door, the bronze metal doors to this cathedral is a 
it's very very uh, grand and uh, I, I, I can still look at it and enjoy the, the carving uh, I, I just wonder how this was done but anyway uh, it's very impressive uh, here when you enter uh, to this uh, uh, Kennedy the Turn Museum they actually uh, at one corner they do a uh, models a wooden structure model and uh, and also they have a video clips to share with you how this column actually have been erected during their time in the same in the 18 early 18th century remember that St. Peterbert's uh, Peter the Great actually founded the St. Peterbert's and therefore actually the cathedral was built in the 18th, beginning 18th century so uh, you were able to have from the video clip to have an understanding of how this uh, huge massive huge solid uh, uh, granite or marble columns have been erected here now you have a look at the grand interior of this St. Isaac's cathedrals Just look at it. This is just only one of the corner. And then look up, you can see that the, the column capitals, the arches, again, every corners are decorated and with a lot of painting. This is just an another view. And uh, the huge domes of the uh, cathedral is just right shown in this picture above. The pictures now at the topmost part, at the center topmost part, that is actually the dome. This is just a closer view of it. And another view of that at a much closer uh, distant and on the other side beside the, the, the main dome I think equally every corner of these cathedrals is fascinating I'm trying to show you the, all the four corners because uh, I, I couldn't left any corner out uh, because each corner is so different from the other and so beautiful that I don't want to miss so I make sure that every corner a picture has been taken and this just right below uh, I'll give you a, a better uh, view of that right below uh, the painting zoom in right at the dome now right below the dome get a perfect uh, symmetrical view of the decoration of these domes I like this picture very much uh, it be, it become the cover page cover picture of my albums. Right, this is just a, a more of a picture of this Saint Isaac cathedrals and a smaller domes. Even the chandelier. It's so beautiful. And this is just uh, three uh, pictures uh, of the uh, one corner of the other drills. I'll tend to move a bit slower in this case because I think this picture uh, is worth spending a bit more time to look at it itself. 
That's why I have recommended a friend in future that when you follow uh, through my travelogue itself because I presented a lot of pictures and the best way to view this picture is not from handphone. The best way to view this picture is on so, your smart TV. They have a big screen that you can see this picture will all stand out. You can see very detailed. You can see the detail of it, you know, uh, from a big picture. When you see from handphone, you can't really see anything. But of course, you have an idea of it, but you want to see the fine detail of the, the images itself. The only way to see it is, is watching on TV. I would strongly recommend that you watch on TV. So you can see that I have been showing so many uh, images just between these uh, cathedrals and I, I couldn't stop it. In fact, I, I didn't have a, even a, a single minute that I, I don't sh press my shutter button to solve my cameras. And this is at the back there, that the, on the left most, you can see that there is actually the, one of the metal doors, the bronze door. Now these two pictures are not identical, actually taking a two corner of the uh, arch and uh, it's right beside the main dome. The intention is to show you that the, the painting uh, and the arch, the painting on the arch and also at the top of the column, the capital there is not the same. In other words, uh, they, as I said earlier, they can look symmetrical but actually uh, the, the inlay, the, the pictures that they put on is not the same at all. So I have taken the, all the four corner. Uh, and now after ascending 238 steps, you finally reach the top, the viewing platform right next to the main domes, which is actually about 101 meter above ground. And uh, because St. Peterburg is laying on quite a flat land, as I said earlier, St. Peterburg was actually uh, occupied in close to 42 islands and with more than 300 bridges. You can find more than 300 bridges in St. Peterburg. No, sorry, uh, yes, St. Peterburg. And therefore, uh, above these uh, uh, St. Isaac's uh, viewing platforms, right beside the main domes, you can able to view the St. Peterburg's 360 degree. Of course, you have to walk around the domes and have a full view of the St. Peterburg's. This is one at one of the uh, angle. And the far end is the gardens. And then after the garden is the river. This another corner, the south, you can see the word south on the bottom of these pictures. And this happened in the statue of the Peter the Great was placed not far from St. Isaac Cathedral. We also come to uh, uh, monuments. The monument they read as Zachini Kem. I'm sorry, I can't spell correctly. Nening Greda monuments. Actually, is the heroes of war. Is uh, to to give us a better understanding. And it's because over here is not only a monument. It's also there's a museum, underground museum. And there are a lot of scriptures they prayed that uh, during the war time how the peoples fought the war how they unite against the fought against their enemy, their enemies
inside the museum, we were the only visitor. Of course, uh, we are given the presentations, video presentations, and these are some of the painting or artworks on the Grand Wall, Hall, a wall, sorry. And then we, uh, uh, by the time we reach this Peter and Paul fortress, it's already close to evening because in winter, the daytime is shorter. And at about four, four thirty, actually, the sky start getting dark. By five, probably it's already almost the sunset. I've, right. So uh, we, although you arrive there uh, just before sunset, but the, the sky get dark very fast. And we we are coming to this place, and we were told that this is actually the resting place of the Tatar's ruler, the Tsar ruler, we call them. And uh, they call this place the Rabbit Islands. Now uh, I will go through uh, about this uh, on the picture. Uh, now, uh, as far as any Peter or Paul fortress. Actually, is the oldest landmark in St. Petersburg, and is an iconic masterpiece of the 18th century architecture. A fortress that had been have the purpose of defending the newly conquered land at the time, because remember that uh, St. Petersburg uh, was actually formed by Peter the Great after his successful conquer Swedes, right? And then so he, he, he built his imperial capital here, and therefore he wouldn't protect his imperial capitals. So he built a fortress. That's the initial plan. Then later on, this fortress was then turned into a political prison. And uh, then over time, this, you realize this, inside this fortress, they also have a cathedrals. Right, and and we we'll understand that this cathedral in this fortress is the highest cathedral in Russia with a height of 122 meter. And the local name this uh, Delta Rabbit Island will look like a rabbit ship. And within the fortress itself, the cathedral lay the remain of the rulers of the Imperial Empire, both the Emperor and the Empress. They mean that Catherine the Great and Peter the Great. The remains are actually in this uh, Peter and Paul fortress. So uh, we have a quick walk because the sky is getting dark. So I'm not able to get some very good images because it's very, very uh, misty and uh, the sky is getting dark very, very fast. And uh, in low light, you know, you can't use fresh light because I think you can't, uh, the fresh light can't do much and we spoil the image. This is just an outer view of the fortress. And this is the one I mentioned, the tallest cathedrals in Russia. And then finally, we come to this church of uh, Saviour in blood. And during a visit to this place, unfortunately, because it's during winter, winter is actually a uh, so-called uh, off-peak season, and most of these uh, places are undergone uh, upgrading or maintenance, and therefore, when we're there, actually, it's not open uh, for visiting. And but uh, I want to share with you that if you have a chance to go to Russia, I think this is also another place of interest that not to be missed. Uh, for simple reason is that this church or savior in blood, or, or they even some people call them savior on spare bloods, is prominently uh, situated along a uh, Gibodo uh, channel. The name I can't spell correctly in Saint Petersburg, and the channel, the church is one of the main site in Saint Petersburg, which was constructed in the year eighteen eighty three and uh, completing in nineteen o seven and was achieved by the M imperial family as a memorial to the emperor's Alexander II. Now, the church has a strong medieval Russian architecture in the spirit of Romantic nationalism. The church contains over 
7,500 meters square of MOSSACK, possibly ranking second in the world. This is the reason why I recommend you to visit this, uh, to see the MOSSACK works inside this cathedral or church. Inside the church wall and ceiling are completely covered, interest, intricately detailed MOSSACK. So this is actually, uh, uh, even though we have, didn't have a chance to go inside, but just looking at the exterior itself is also well decorated. Right, this is uh, just a various view from all corners, as far as we can. You really can see that uh, the, uh, the decoration is again is very, very unique uh, in this church. Then uh, over some free time, we also roaming around uh, in St. Peterburg's, but of course it is along the way. And uh, the picture you see is a, is a ceramic mural wall. Uh, in St. Peterburg and happened to come across the, the, the quick, I quickly take a snap of it. I was quite impressed with that, the, the, the craftsmanship. And this is actually another one called Rostral Columns. There are two of them face uh, each other but at a distance apart. And this is also another monument is was donated by ancient, they call ancient Egyptian spins. I was told that it donated by Egyptian governments. And we also uh, come across a warship, Aurora Cruiser Warship Museum. A warship turned museum is the most close to 100 years. And I was told this is actually the, the warship to fire the first shot that, that led to the, the collapse of the Tsar Emperors. The, they mean the, uh, the Imperial Emperors of Russia. And also there's a ship restaurants. Of course, we didn't visit these uh, restaurants and the end of uh, today's presentation. So uh, I've actually have covered Russia and I promise you that to share with you the nation that I'm going to share with you in the coming weeks is Bolivia in South America. A place that we need to on the flight for more than 24 hours at screen transit time. And again, there's no direct flight. And uh, we landed in uh, Peru, Lima, the capital city of Peru. Then we then continued our journey uh, to Bolivia, then back to Peru. So I will share with you on this Bolivia first in this coming weeks. And uh, later on, I found a, a time slot for me to share with you my travel logs to Peru. And I hope that you enjoy it. If you enjoy it, my travel logs, please do subscribe, like, and share so that uh, friends and family of yours can be uh, literally uh, virtually to around the world at the comfort of your home. Right? And uh, as I say, uh, being able to travel right, is always a good thing. And I have to thank you for living until this point. And I hope that. Uh, in the coming weeks, I can see you again in this live streaming to my next episode to a nation far away from Malaysia. And for those who are not from Malaysia, friends around the world, then it's also a very interesting place that, that I wish to share with you. That will be my next nation that I pick on. Thank you very much and for viewing.